Hi, Explorers. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us today at the Aquarium Online Academy here at the Aquarium of the Pacific. Really exciting day. This is our first class of the day. We are going to be learning and practicing our A, B, Cs. So really, really great and fun time. If you do have any questions during this program, if you want to text in maybe your favorite animal or anything like that, we do have a live text line uh, during this. And that number is you can see on the screen, 562-286-1838. But if you are watching this any other day, that is in July 7th from 9 to 9.30. Feel free to email us at live at baop.org. But if when we're talking today about the different letters, different animals, you want to send in your favorite animal, completely feel free and go ahead and make sure you are getting your pay permission as well but like i said we are going to be learning our abcs today uh, through different animals making different observations exploring different parts of the ocean depending on what animal we're going to be learning about we aren't going to be starting from the letter a however if you've been following along we've been trying to do the whole alphabet so we're going to be starting with the letter l first but before we get to the letter L, I want to build up to it so we can just, you can say it along with me if you want. You can yell it out. You can whisper it. You can tell your parents, your siblings, your cats, your dogs, a plant, anything you want. But we're going to go ahead and build up to L. So from the very beginning, you can go ahead and just say the alphabet with me. So we have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, we're almost there. Are you ready? Drum roll. L. <laughs> so our very first letter is going to be that letter L. We can make that L sound, which is L. L, L. You can make the letter L with your body. We can be a really nice, tall, big, long L. Get your morning stretches. Get on your tippy toes, stretch those arms out. But our very first letter is going to be the letter L. And we have a very special animal. One of my favorite animals here at the aquarium. This is actually one of my really favorite ones that we have, which doesn't live in the ocean. We are making a special <laughs> exception for it. Those are our lorikeets that we have here at the aquarium. So like I... Here in the studio, I do want to mention I am not alone. So all these beautiful pictures, that text sign that we just saw, um, Sarah is going to be doing all the magic behind us. When If you do send any questions or anything like that, and Dana is on our computer, on our text line. So feel free to tell her good morning or anything like that. But here we have these beautiful lorikeets that I was mentioning. You can see this beautiful coloration. So like I mentioned, these do not live in the ocean, um, but we do have them here at the aquarium. And you can see, what colors do you see? Yeah, if you're saying orange, Sarah just said blue, we see some green, all different colors. So in what part of the world do you think they might live in? Maybe if you're saying like it's somewhere that's a little bit warmer, more colorful, these guys specifically actually live in areas like Australia, Papua New Guinea, Indonesia. I'll step off the screen for a second so you can just observe some of those lorikeets in their natural habitat um, just hanging out in trees. So you can see those nice pretty colors that we were just observing and how they're able to blend in a little bit better with that coloration um, because they would be found in places with all these really really nice trees but they also love to eat flowers and fruits. So lorikeets are really special because they, they're what you call a nectivore. Sometimes when we think of birds, we think that birds eat seeds or maybe more solid things. Maybe you've gone to the park and you fed bird seeds or you fed duck feed to some of the ducks. But um, lorikeets in specific only eat liquids. So that means they have an all liquid diet. So they like to just eat and suck out the nectar and flower pollen from different flowers. Sometimes they just go and find fruit and like to chew on fruit and just suck all that juice out. If you've ever put an orange slice in your mouth and did that little smiley trick and just sucked all the juice out of the orange, it's kind of like that. Um, here at the aquarium, our lorikeets, their favorite fruit is actually bananas and their second favorite are grapes and they make an absolute mess when they eat them as well. 
Oh, okay. So it seems like one of you actually um, does have some lorikeets out in South America as well that you've been able to see in your home. So yeah, exactly. Those warmer areas and those warmer regions. There are a few different types of lorikeets as well if you are curious um, about the different subspecies of them. Here are the two that we are looking at. These are Swainson's lorikeets. So the Swainson's lorikeets have that really nice, pretty sunset chest. But if we were looking at that picture that Sarah pulled up earlier, or here we go, she actually pulled up this fabulous picture, and you can see the three different types of lorikeets that we specifically have here at the aquarium. There are more than just these out in their natural habitats, um, but these are the three that we do have here at the aquarium. So you can see that green named lorikeet, the Swainson's lorikeet, which I mentioned has that sunset chest and that Edwards lorikeet. So really, really pretty birds. And sometimes when we look at different animals, you might wonder how you can tell if they're male or female. They're also very special in the fact that there's no specific coloration um, that will separate them from one another. All of these birds actually have to get a blood test. So just like your doctor, when you go to the doctor, they have a file just for you of all the different shots, of all your different visits, of all those different things. Um, so each of these birds does have a name and we have around 110 lorikeets here at the aquarium, but it has their name, their blood type, if they're male or female, and even different behaviors and where you can find them in the specific exhibit. So yeah, really, really uh, fantastic birds that we have here at the aquarium. These are rainbow lorikeets once again with that letter L. Let's make that L sound one more time. La, la, la. We can make our big tall L once again. Stretch your hands, get your morning stretch ascension all the way up high. You're the letter L. But we have lorikeets, but our very next letter after L is going to be the letter M. So we can make our nice M over here. We kind of look like a heart, but it's okay. <laughs> Maybe you can make yours a little bit better than mine. But with our letter M comes an animal that is a little bit more local to us uh, versus these rainbow lorikeets that we were just observing. And that is going to be our moray eel. And you can see this beautiful moray eel that we have here at the aquarium, this really nice close-up of it. So we can start off with making the sound of our letter M which is going to be mm, mm, mm. So you can see, like I said, that coloration. You can see its eye, its body shape as well. Um, they kind of remind me of spaghetti noodles because that's how they like to swim around. They have really thin, flexible bodies. And why do you think that that would be really helpful to them? Do you know where a moray eel lives? Once again, feel free to whisper it. Feel free to shout it out. Feel free to tell anyone in your house, your plants, anything like that. Feel free to text us in. If you have a favorite animal that starts with any of the letters we're talking about, also feel free to send those in. I'm very interested in hearing what animals you like as well. But if you said that they have those um, kind of squiggly bodies, those flexible bodies, to be able to really thrive and live um, healthily within their ecosystem, you're absolutely correct. Like I mentioned, uh, these Murray eels are local to us. So they're going to be living in areas like kelp forest. Um, so those kelp forests have different rocks within them, different holes that you can find in those kelp forests. So having a body like the Murray eel lets them just swim into one of those rocks, pretend you're an eel. And then you're able to hide in between those rocks from different predators. So that is a really great adaptation that that moray eel does have with that body shape. So very, very cool animals. We can make that sound once again with our moray eel. Mm, mm, mm. But we'll go ahead and move on to our next letter, which is going to be the letter N. So when I was thinking about the letter N, I was thinking... How are we going to make the letter N? <laughs> and luckily, Sarah helped me. With this one, we're going to do uh, more of a stretch. I know you can't see my legs, but if we just bend more than I did, you'll be a letter N. I know you can't see my whole body, but that's how we're going to do it. Or if you want, you can make a small letter letter N. <laughs> or you can write it out if you want to as well. But with our letter N, this is also an animal that was a little bit hard to think about um, what ocean animals start with the letter N. So if you have one, once again, feel free to send it in. But our letter N is going to be for our animal, the Nautilus. Oh, look at that really nice picture. I'll step out of frame so you can get a good look at that coloration. So what patterns do you guys see? What colors do you see? 
So if you're seeing things like polka dots that we can observe over here, you can see different striped patterns as well all over its body. You are absolutely correct. So it might be really surprising. These guys, it might be your first time you've even seen them. They look kind of weird. What? And you might be wondering, what are they related to? They are part of that cephalopod family, and they have been al alive as a species as a whole, has existed on this planet for a very, very long time, that they're actually often referred to as a living fossil. And if you're wondering what a cephalopod is, they're related to animals like octopus and squids and different animals like that. So you might be looking at them like they look very different. They have a shell, and they are one of the only ones that do have that protective shell all over their bodies. And I kind of gave it away, but what do you think that shell could help them with? So if you're saying things like protection, protecting them from predators, being able to blend in and camouflage with their environment, you're absolutely correct. Oh, Sarah just pulled up a really nice picture and we can get a closer look at that shell, that softer body inside too that you see in here, which is what that shell is really protecting is everything that's inside. And if you're wondering where they live as well, uh, they tend to live in the Indo-Pacific and lightly dim tropical areas, so in those warmer waters too. So really, really helpful. So I actually just got a qu question in right now, and that is from Maddie. So Maddie just sent in, do mores bite? Which is a really great question. So sometimes when we're observing the different animals, here we have our moray eel once again. So um, sometimes when we think about animals and different things like that, uh, we think about biting or maybe associate those different things with them. But animals really won't tend to really care about us or want to go up to us um, and bite us um, unless they want to protect themselves. So our moray eels here at the aquarium, they really don't care about any of us. Uh, when our divers are in the exhibit and they're feeding, the moray eels just want to get to the food. They want to get to the bucket the divers are holding. But apart from that, they just like to hang out in their rocks. So really, most animals don't bite unless they want to protect themselves or unless they're trying to get to um, the food that they want. Um, that's the food that they're going to be biting. But yeah, really great question, Maddie. If you guys do have any questions, once again, we do have that live text line that you can feel free to send any of those texts into, um, which is going to be at 562-286-1838. So, so far, let's just go over the letters we've done so far, and then we'll move on to our next letter. So we did our letter L, that really nice stretch. We did our letter M, which made that mm, mm. Mm sound. We did our letter N. I'll do the um, small little N, but you can do the bigger one if you want. That makes that N, N, N sound. Next, we're going to move on to our next letter. And maybe you're already making the stretch if you're stretching along with me today. We're going to make our letter O and our animal for the letter O are going to be our otters. So we do have sea otters here at the aquarium here. We have this really, really cute picture um, that Sarah just pulled up for us right now. So just take a look at them for a second. I'll let you look at them. Just think that they're really, really cute. I think that they're very, very cute. Um, so we can start to make some observations about otters or what do you know about otters? You can just think about different facts that you might know about them as well. So we do have, like I mentioned, sea otters here at the aquarium that will do different things. We'll do different trainings with them. And like I mentioned, I know they are really, really cute, but maybe you've been to a place uh, where otters live. We do live here in California and we do have what you call kelp forest. I've mentioned kelp forest already when we were talking about that moray eel. So otters do live in those kelp forests. So if you've been to like Monterey Bay or those areas down there, you might have had the opportunity to see that, um, see sea otters out in their natural habitat. So you can see these kelp forest um, that we are very, very, very fortunate to have here in Southern California because we're actually five, one out of five to six places that can sustain these kelp forests. And what that means is that our water temperature, the salt in our water, and all these different things line up just perfectly enough to be able to host these ecosystems. And that's what brings animals like otters over here to really be able to thrive and succeed um, within our waters.
And otters are definitely very, very important to kelp forests because they're what you call keystone species. But before I get into that, you can just see this really cute otter uh, munching on some lunch and you can see some of the kelp it's actually swimming in. But let's go back to that term I just mentioned, which was keystone species. You can say that with me if you want. I'll say it one more time, keystone species. And what that means is that without otters or without whatever animal that keystone species is, the environment wouldn't be able to really thrive or survive, which is what I was actually happening at one point in time. So like I mentioned quite a few times, as you can tell, I think otters are really, really cute. But they're also very, very special because that fur that they have on them is very, very thick. If you make a little OK sign, this little circle right here is around a square inch. And on an otter, like right there, you can see that square inch, there's around a million hairs in that little circle. Isn't that crazy? So you can imagine how thick, how nice, how soft that fur really is. So that made them a really easy target um, for people who wanted to make coats or different things out of their fur. So there was a point in time, unfortunately, where otters were hunted to near extinction, meaning that there was almost none of them left um, on the planet. There was only around 40 to 50 of them. But fortunately, when we realized this, different protections got put into place like the Fur Treaty Act, um, the Marine Mammal Protection Act, and their, name, their numbers were able to go back up. And right now, their numbers are somewhere around the 3,000 to 3,200s. So they're doing a lot better than they were before. And since our numbers have come up, those kelp forests that we were talking about have been able to come back up as well. And you might be wondering, well, what makes otters a keystone species? I've told you guys about why, um, how they're important, but now the question is why? And it's because sea otters love to eat sea urchins. Like, how many of you guys like to eat chocolate? I love to eat chocolate. Sarah is raising her hand immediately. She loves to eat chocolate too. And these beautiful urchins right here is kind of most otters' favorite snack, their version of chocolate. They'll actually eat so many sea urchins, their teeth will turn purple. When they were sighting some sea otters once they were older and they were looking at their bones, they saw some of their bones had actually turned a bit purple just because of how many sea urchins they eat in their entire life. And that's really, really great because sea urchins like to eat kelp. But they like to eat a very specific part of the kelp, and that's what you call the hold fast. So I'm going to step off camera for one second and grab a hold fast so you guys can see what I mean. So they like to eat this part. So kelp is very special because it's very, very simple. So simple, it's actually not a plant. So it's not rooted down into the bottom of the ocean or anything like that. It has this root structure that just attaches itself to rocks. So urchins like to come along, just eat this hold fast up, which means there's nothing holding that kelp down anymore. So that kelp just floats away. But luckily, since we do have sea otters, they're able to eat those sea urchins, maintain and control that population, um, that group of that very specific animal. And there's this really great balance. So there you can just kind of learn about and think about how it's just really important that all these different levels of animals are really nice and healthy. But it does look like I just got another question in um, from Natalie, Noah, and Sammy, and they're asking what otters eat. So like I mentioned, they will be eating things like urchins, but they'll also eat different things. Um, here at the aquarium, um, we feed them different things. You can see this really cute picture, this really nice close-up of one of our otters that we have here, and they're actually eating a piece of clam. So they'll eat clams, squid, um, and then sometimes they'll make sea star sandwiches when they're out in the ocean. Uh, they'll eat abalones. Yeah, so just lots and lots of different things. And you might be wondering, some of those things that we looked at, like the urchins, abalones here, they have that really hard shell. Hmm, do any of you know or do you think? What are your thoughts? How do you think otters are able to get these harder shelled animals open? Maybe you know that sea otters use different tools. Sea otters are really, really cool because they have pockets that their fur creates. So imagine one day, 
let's pretend we all went to the park, right? So this is us walking to the park right now. And you found a rock that you really, really liked. I know I used to love collecting rocks. I still love collecting rocks. Um, and I found a really, really pretty rock and decided to pick it up. And I was like, hmm, I don't want to hold this. And I put it in my armpit. And I just kept walking, went along with my day, and I took that rock out when you when I needed it. That's what sea otters essentially do. That fur, like I mentioned, creates different layers. So when they find rocks or sticks or different tools um, that they know that they'll need, they'll stuff it in those pockets. Then when they get that urchin and it's time to open it up, they'll get their rock out, crack that shell open, open it up, and eat what's inside. So they're very, very smart animals. I highly recommend looking those things up because it is truly incredible being able to see them do those different things. But yeah, really, really great questions, guys. So, so far, we've done our letter L. We've done our letter M. We've done our letter N. We've done our O. Let's review what sound O makes. O, O, O. Our very next letter is going to be the letter, we'll make a little P, that might be easier. Sarah's laughing at me right now. Oh, so our letter P, and what sound does P make? P, P, P. And we're going to do another very special guest we have here at the aquarium, which are our penguins. So penguins are very, very cute. Oh, Sarah has pulled up our penguin camera. So these are Magellanic penguins. So let's just take a second to make some observations. Maybe you can try and count how many are on the screen. You can observe how they're waddling around. That's always really cute. They're different colors. You can see some of them are hanging out in groups. It kind of looks like they're waiting for something right now, actually. Typically around this time, um, from like 9.20 to 9.40ish, they sometimes get fed. So they might be hearing um, one of the aviculturists in the back if they're making some noise trying to get organized. Um, but yeah, so these are our Magellanic penguins once again. And if you've never heard of a Magellanic penguin, or if you're watching from somewhere um, that's not from around here and you haven't been to the aquarium, you might be wondering, where's the snow? Don't they need to stay cold? And some animals, some penguins do live in those colder areas, but animals like our Magellanic penguins that we have here do live in warmer regions that's going to be like chile argentina and places like that so that is one very very special thing about them so that's why they like to sunbathe they have this water portion they're able to swim in so yeah so you might have already observed that you can also see how they're um just flapping their little wings sometimes they like to pop up puff up their feathers you can try doing it with them as well do your little penguin movement you might hear my keys because i'm doing it along with you guys so yeah those are our magellanic penguins that we have here maybe we can get a closer look at one of our um, magellanic penguins we'll just give sarah a second to pull one of those pictures up um, but they are very, very cute. And like I mentioned, they are going to be living in those warmer regions. But here we go. Here's more of a closer look at this coloration, this black and white colors. You can also see the shape of their beak. What do penguins eat? Just feel free to say out loud, shout it out. Yeah, they're going to be eating different types of fish. Um, so when our aviculturist feeds them today, she will be giving different fish um, to them. And you might be wondering how we're able to feed our penguins or even just our different animals here at the aquarium. And I have to say, the people who work with their animals are very, very brilliant. They're very, very smart and they're very good at telling them apart. If we were to look at that penguin camera all day, I could probably not tell you who is who. The only way I would be able to identify them is they have this really cool identification band. Maybe some of you like to wear bracelets. I used to like making bracelets with different colored beads. So it's kind of like if they have a little bracelet band with different colored beads. And if you ever come here at the aquarium and you want to know who is who, you can see those beads and all those beads belong to a name. And if you're curious about some of their names, because they all do have names, we have penguins like Admiral Fancy Pants. We have whatever, we have Wally, we have Cleo, we have around 23 penguins, I want to say if I am correct. 
somewhere around that number um so yeah just lots of different really cool things about these penguins they are really silly and if you ever do want to look at that camera that sarah pulled up as well uh you can always check that out that is a live penguin feed if you're ever just wondering what our penguins are up to here at the aquarium so that was our letter p let's make that p sound once again p, p, p. next we're going to go on to the letter q I really didn't think about how I was going to stretch for this one. Um, so we're just going to go small once again. That's kind of what we're going to be doing, I feel, for these next weeks is going small for these letters farther in the alphabet. So you can see that letter Q, you might have a better time if you're actually writing them down by that letter Q. And what sound does the letter Q make? Yeah, that is our letter Q, and we have one of my favorite fish here at the aquarium that we're going to be talking about, which is our Queensland grouper. Uh, so you can find our Queensland grouper out in that tropical um, habitat that we have here, a really, really big fish. We've kind of spoken about all over the world, different temperatures, different areas of the ocean but we'll get a picture of our Queensland grouper up very shortly. It is a very, very big fish, um, has very unique coloration as well all over its body. But for now, what we can do as we wait is maybe you have some favorite tropical animals that you want to share or think about or anything like that. It does look like Sarah has pulled up our tropical camera for us. So... Oh, I see our Queensland grouper. So we're going to put on our explorer eyes right now. Put on your explorer goggles. Here we go. I know I'm already wearing glasses. This doesn't really help me. But put on your explorer goggles. I'm going to tell you you're looking for a, a big gray fish. It's kind of hidden behind some coral is your hint. I'll give you a few seconds. Hmm. You can see our Queensland grouper over here actually. So I did say it's really big right now since half of its body is below this coral. It's a little bit hard to tell, but you can see that Queensland grouper right on over here. So wrong way for me. <laughs> you can take a closer look at that Queensland grouper. We'll kind of see and observe if it moves at all. But I'll answer this question that we actually did just have come in right now from Nina. She's asking, do penguins eat anything other than fish that's a really great question because they do they'll actually sometimes be eating krill and squid out there in their natural habitats um here sometimes i believe a special treat will actually give them um squid but yeah really really great question um so here once again we do have our queensland group where you can kind of get a better look at the rest of its body it might actually be getting cleaned right now so um, Queensland groupers are very, very interesting to observe, specifically the one we have here at uh, within our exhibit at the aquarium because they have different cleaning stations. So sometimes um, within these different areas of the coral that you can observe, there'll be a little tiny fish. If you hold out your pinky, we're not even going to try to look for this fish because that's how small it is. Um, it's called a little cleaner rest and it's about the size of our pinkies. Uh, well, depending on how big your pinky is, um, it might be a little bit bigger than mine actually. <laughs> Um, but it's a little cleaner -esque. so this little small fish will be hanging out around the coral and they'll be waiting and waiting until a fish comes and pulls up and that can be animals like our queens and grouper and they'll actually go in between their gills and clean everything up in there sometimes our queens and grouper will open up its mouth it has a really big mouth i'll even go and clean up in there like a dentist you can kind of imagine it's kind of like a fish car wash and you might be wondering why does cleaner ass like to do that we didn't hire it to clean our fish or anything like that. The reason why it does that is because those different things that it can pick off the fish, it can eat. And the other fish like to go, like our rays, that queens and grouper that we're talking about, like to go. And they get really nice and cleaned up and they stay really nice and healthy. So yeah, that's just one of the many relationships that can exist within these very, very wonderful ecosystems. So that is our Queens and Grouper once again with that letter Q. And we can just stay on this camera for our next animal. Oh, we'll just go over it very quickly since we only have a minute. Um, but those are going to be our rays, which, of course, it's kind of an unspoken rule whenever you try to talk about animals here at the aquarium. 
they like to just disappear. It's like they know. <laughs> but you might have seen some of the rays uh, swimming around. Oh, we actually have one of our eagle rays on camera right now that you can see going on up that eagle ray over here with all those polka dots on its back. So we can just make that R sound, that R, R, R. <laughs> and um, that's going to be our race. But I do want to go over the an the letters that we've learned today, actually. And you can just, if you want, observe to see if that queens and grouper does move. But we did start with that letter L. So let's stretch. If you're stretching with me today, Sarah's doing it with us, too. That's going to be our letter L. That's going to make that L, L, L sound. Then we did our letter M for our more a eel. That's that mmm sound. Maybe you're gonna eat some yummy breakfast, or maybe you're eating breakfast while you do this. So mmm. <laughs> then we had our letter N. I'm gonna do that little N. That's gonna be that n n n sound. We learned about the Nautilus. Then we're gonna do our letter O. We looked at our really really cute otters here. Um, that's gonna be the O. O, o sound and then we did our letter p we're gonna do a little small p and we looked at our penguins that we have here at the aquarium that p p p sound then last but not least our queens and grouper which if you ever come here to the aquarium you can get a better view of it or you can also go on to our camera at any time over here at explore.org and see if you can spot it a little bit better but that letter q which is going to be that q Q sound. So yeah, those are our letters that we learned today, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Our next program is going to be at 11 o'clock, and that is going to be our shark program, and Sarah is actually going to be teaching that. So yeah, thank you so much for joining us once again, and have a good rest of your day, and I hope to see you soon.